Nehemiah chapter 13. As we break into this chapter, I should put a little warning here that this chapter is not for the feeble heart, not for the weary Christian, the, the weak Christian, the worldly Christian. Uh, give you the opportunity to turn off and go listen to your radio preaching if you want. But if you want the truth, stay in. We're in chapter 13, the last chapter in Nehemiah, 13 in the Bible is rebellion. And so you guess what we're going to deal with. And if you listen to these videos before, you know I'm going to teach the truth and preach the truth. You don't like it? It's up to you and God, because I'm reading it out of the book. On that day, they read in the book. They read in the book of Moses, in the audience of the people. It's amazing how here we got the whole city is listening to the word of God, and you can't even get members of a church all to gather in on Sunday morning. But you expect the revival. And therein was found written that the Amorite, their Lot's children, and the Moabite, Lot's children, should not come into the congregation of God forever. You find that in Deuteronomy 23, verses 3 and 4. Now, isn't it great how God words the scriptures to the Holy Spirit? Because there was a little young lady, young lady, uh, little, but if she's of the race of the Jews, of Abraham on that, she's probably small, but she was of Moab. And she gave birth to a boy that would give birth to a boy that would give birth to a boy that would be the Jesse, which would be David, the Solomon, and all the kings of Judah. Now, isn't it great that, that God did that and that David, Solomon, and some of those kings are going to be in heaven and Jesus Christ is going to be in heaven because he's of the line of this woman here, but she's going to hell by this verse. It says, not, The Moabite shall not enter in the congregation of the Lord for, of God forever. She was a Moabite this. She wasn't a Moabite, she was a Moabite S. Go back and read Ruth. The Bible made sure you knew she was a test, not an ight. See, God already knows the future from history. God knows what's going to happen already. That's why, God, you have to read your King James Bible. That's why you got to read the words of the King James Bible. That's why you don't mess with the words of the King James Bible. Because once you start messing with God's words, you start messing with events. You start messing with history. You start messing with the uh, future. Why did God do this? We've been talking about all through Nehemiah. We've been all talking about through Ezra. Nehemiah is a history book, yes, but it's also a prophetic book that's going to happen again. You find this in Matthew 24 and 25. Now watch. Because they met not the children of Israel with bread and with water. So what did Jesus say? When you, when, when my brethren were in jail, you came and visited me. When my brethren were hungry, you fed me. When we were sick, you, you, you took care of And the people said, well, when do we do that, Lord? He says, he says we, uh, he's talking about the nation of Israel, but he puts it on himself as a Jew. He's a Jew, and there are his brethren. And there's another group of people he turns to. He says, they're the goats. And you didn't do it unto me. You didn't do this to me. You didn't help me. He said, well, why didn't you? Well, we didn't know what were you talking about when you didn't do it to my brethren. We didn't help my brethren. You didn't take care of my brethren. And he separated the sheep from the goats. He puts the goats off into hell. And he lets the sheep, those are the nations, that, the Gentile nations that do what God uh, do for Israel and helps Israel out with the Antichrist running around. He lets them go into the millennium. Moab and Ammon are, are, are judged because they did not take care of God's people. And worse than the fact is, these people are family to Ammonite, I mean to, to Ammon and Moab through Lot, who was, you got to go back to Genesis and find out and 
If you know the family thing, you can run it. I don't understand the family thing. I do know one thing. There's rel there's, there's relativism here. There's the relatives. And they didn't help the Jew out. And we'll go even further. It says, but they hired Balaam. You go to Numbers 22 to 24. Numbers chapter 22 to 24 to see they hired Balaam to curse Israel. Against them. That he should curse them. Howbeit God turned the curse into a blessing. Numbers 22 to 24. And you see how that happened. So because of that, God tells Moab and Ammon. Oh, you mean Ammon was a part of that too? We just read the Moabites. In Numbers 22 and 24. Oh, you got extra information. And Ammon was there too. Part of the, you know, hired Balaam to, to curse him. Now it came to pass when they had heard the law that they separated from Israel all the mixed multitude. Well, look at that. You want a revival in the church? Stand up in that pulpit preaching and say, everyone who does not love the Lord Jesus Christ, those who are not saved, those who don't want to do what the Bible says to do, get out of this building right now. That's what they did right here. I don't care if it's your mama, I don't care if it's your wife, I don't care if it's your children, I don't care if it's your neighbor, I don't care if it's your boss, I don't care if you're going to lose your job. If you're not going to serve the Lord, get out. If you're not God's people, get out. Would you ever hear a nonsense of inviting the lost people into, into God's home? Oh, we're going to see that in this chapter. You want to hear me get excited? You want to hear me preach? We'll keep on going about a lost man being inside the house of God. Literally. Ready? So get the mixed multitude out. You think God's going to bless unholiness amongst his people? And before this, this name's going to come up again. Elisha, the priest. Get this. Are we not priests according to Revelation chapter 1? Yes, we are. If you're a saved, born again Christian, you are a priest. Having an oversight of the chamber of the house of our God. Well, the house of our God then was the temple. We, according to Corinthians, we are the house of God today. According to Peter, we are the lively stones. It's not a building today. It's the individual Christians who are born again that make up the church. We are a corporation of saved people, Jews and Gentiles, men and women. Young and old. Had an oversight of the house of God. Are you priests, Christians? Revelation 1. Do you have an oversight over the, over the body? Are you not in charge of your wife? Are you not in charge of your family? Are you not helping out the church? Pastor, are you not overseer of the church? Was allied. Connected by marriage. Or a treaty unto Tobiah. Chapter 2, verses 10, 19, and uh, all the places in Nehemiah. Tobiah was an enemy. Tobiah tried to stop the work. Tobiah tried to insult them, saying, you know, if the foxes come up, it's going to knock everything down. And here is the enemy married to a priest who is an oversight. It's a mixed marriage. And friend, you don't have to stand before a preacher and say, I do to be mixed married to somebody. You can just hang around with the wrong people in your life. It's amazing how the Bible says that in verse 3, that they separate themselves from a mixed multitude. And verse 4, God goes even more to define a mixed multitude. And he had prepared for him a great chamber. Not just a chamber. A great chamber. 
large, roomy, where aforetime, before he acquired this chamber, this is what the chamber was for. They laid the meat offerings, which belongs to who? God. The frankincense. That was laid out on the showbread. That was used for the sacrifices. And the vessels. There are God's vessels used for the sacrifices. And the tithes of the corn that people brought in. And new wine. And the oil. Anointing oil. Which was commanded to be given to the Levites. This stuff right here in this chamber was commanded to be brought in. And to be given to the Levites as their pay. As their salary. And the singers. Well, we saw this in chapter 12, verse 44. It was commanded by the king that the singers all that will get their wages for serving God by singing. And the porters. Read John chapter 10 and find out who these guys are a type of. And the offerings of the priests. So this guy cleans out this whole place, probably uses it all for himself, his great chamber, and he gives it to himself. Listen, this chamber is in the house of God, the Old Testament. There are today, in 2013, there are Tobias in the house of God, the, the Christians, the lively stones, the building built upon the foundation of Jesus Christ. And in all actualities, he is the enemy. But in all the in all this time was not I at Jerusalem. Well, Nehemiah had gone back. He had to go back. He had told the king, listen, I'm going to go there for a set amount of time. Now I will return. He obeyed the king. He obeyed the powers that be. He was faithful to what the king commanded him. For in the two and thirtieth year of Artaxerxes, king of Babylon, came I unto the king, and after certain days obtained I leave of the king. So he goes see the king, he tells him the business, get, you know, how they do, walls are done, ta temples built, people got the homes, thank you very much king, we had a great, you know, uh, feast of tabernacles, we, we, we've been offering to the God, we've been praying for you, can I go back? And the king gives him leave. So where do you think the military get? You know, shore leave. Where do you think you get in the in the job place? A maternity leave. You get out of the King James 1611 Bible. I don't know what other Bibles say. I don't know how you're going to look, but I wonder if it's the same word. You know what leave means. It's all around you in 2013. Verse 7. And I came to Jerusalem and understood of the evil that Elisha did for Tobiah. So this priest, you get what I'm saying? This priest, Revelation chapter 1, brought this unsaved man into church. And this unsaved man has settled himself into the church. And is not recorded to be saved. And has made himself a room, a chamber, an office. How many people are in churches today who are in an office of a church and are lost are a Tobiah that was brought in by a priest? You know, go out there and invite people to come to church. Write your neighbors, your unsaved family, come to church. Why? So you can't learn nothing in the Bible because all you're going to get is a salvation message each and every time? In preparing him a chamber in the courts of the house of God, in the house of God, the Old Testament, the temple. 
where God dwells, where God said, I will put my name, where God says that altar, you're to offer that sacrifice, where you're to burn that lamb in the morning and at night, where you are once a year to bring that blood into, into the veil and put it on the mercy seat, where you're to put those 12 loaves of breads out, six by six, where you're going to make sure that candle is lit every morning, taken care of, where you're to make sure that fire is burning always on the altar, you're to make sure you're to wash at the, at the water, at the labor, you're allowing this guy who is not of God's people to dwell in God's house. Wow. Can I say something else too now? Can I go even further here? Or do you want me to shut up and put duct tape on my mouth? I'm sorry, that's what the government is going to want me to do. That's what the worldly Christians are going to want me to do. And I'm not going to shut up. I'm telling you right now that Nehemiah is a prophetic book that's going to happen again. Guess what person is going to enter the holy place? Guess what person is going to enter the house of God? Guess what person is going to walk in there and make himself a chamber? The Antichrist! He's an enemy of the Jews, isn't he? He's going to kill the Jews, and he has himself a nice little room in the house of God. And everybody's allowing it. Just like the guy over there in the Corinthian church, you know, here's a guy who's sleeping with his father's wife, and oh, yeah, it's just a hunky dory. <laughs> I mean, after all, that guy is number 536 on Sunday morning, and he has a good tithe record. Don't want to lose money. We don't want to lose, you know, numbers. Don't want to do that. This Tobiah is a type of antichrist who settles himself in the house of God. Wouldn't it be great? We know the Antichrist has got to be born. He's got to be. Wouldn't it be great if you fostered the Antichrist in your church? You ever think about that? That lost man that you bring to the church, your pastor says, bring lost people to the church, your family. What if he's the Antichrist? I, don't know, I just threw that out there. Verse 8. What does the man of God have to say about a lost man being in the temple? Ready? It grieved me sore. Praise! Hallelujah! Glory to God! We got some visitors here. You want to get the bozo buttons and the balloons and we'll pray the gazoos and all that. And hallelujah! I'm going to change today's message for those people back there. And we're going to give you a salvation message so you Christians over there won't grow at all. Because you get one visitor in the church, you got to preach a salvation message. And over any other message, even that main guy's coming in because he's visiting as a, as a tourist, he may be already saved, but he's going to hear a salvation message. Because he's a newbie. So you get a bunch of churches that don't grow. Nehemiah said, it grieved me sore. Therefore, I cast forth all the household stuff of Tobiah out of the chamber. Man, he threw the stuff out. I bet you it was pots and pans, underwear, and, and shirts, and, and sandals, and, and maybe a chicken or whatever. It's just throwing the stuff out the door. Get out of here. You don't belong. I'd love to see Nehemiah doing this. Wait, wait till you see what Nehemiah is going to do next. Nehemiah is a character. Nehemiah is the kind of guy we need pul We need in the pulpits in America today. If you had more Nehemiahs in the pulpit, you wouldn't have this mess going around today. I mean, can you just see Nehemiah going into your pew, grabbing your Bible, grabbing whatever you have, and just throwing it out the door and said, don't come back. We did that today. You know, they'll go get some lawyers and stuff like that and fight you. Next. And I commanded, and they cleansed the chambers. Cleansed them. 
409 uh, Murphy's oil so you guys this guy is filthy his stuff is filthy no I bet you they were cleaning it with blood I bet you they were cleaning it with with olive oil I bet you they were cleaning it with prayers probably offered some sacrifices being sorry that this had happened being a sin offering and they cleansed the chambers and thither brought I again the vessels of the house of God. I brought the vessels of God. Oh, you mean God's stuff was put somewhere else? Like the messages? You find things hidden because you get people to come into your church. You can't preach certain things because you might upset them. So you take God's scriptures and you just put, I mean, listen, Bibles. We'll use the new modern versions of the Bible because it just pleases everybody. We're not going to have the King James because that's just too harsh. So what are the vessels of the house of God? What would that be today? That would be a King James Bible. How about properly administering the Lord's Supper? And making sure the people that take part of it are saved and know that they're saved and know that they confess their sins. And it's not something you do every day or, I mean, every week or every month or whatever you do. And make sure it's done properly. What about the music? Wouldn't that be a vessel? Make, make sure the music is proper and right? With the meat offering and the frankincense. Getting back to what they're supposed to do. And not only that, look, look what this unsaved guy did in the temple. And I perceived that the portions of the Levites had not been given them. The Levites were not being paid. The bills are not being paid. The men of God are not being paid. The Levites and the singers that did the work were fled everyone to his field. They are in violation of what we read last night in chapter 12, verse 44. They are in violation of the king's commandment. The king ordered them for these singers to be paid. Had the king shown up, he would found them at fault and had all rights to arrest them. Do you know somewhere where Jesus said, Have I shown up and found you not doing what you're supposed to be doing? You do know those verses, right? Had the king shown up, finding your pastor who loves the word, who loves to preach, who loves his people, who wants to do right, is doing right, and find that he has to have a secular job because you're not paying him right. Wait till the Lord comes and finds that happening. You do read where Paul says about the ox over there, he's to get double portion. Everyone to his field means they had to go to work. They had to make their own food. Because this guy was in the house of God. He was in the plate. Oh, look at that. Maybe he was in the treasury. You know two places in the ministry that are, are very troubling? They follow after Satan. The song service and the treasury. Satan, Lucifer, was the first song leader. And Judas Iscariot held the bag, and he was a traitor and a thief. Those are the two offices in the church that you better watch out. You better have much prayer. Keep on going. Look at verse 11, Nehemiah. Then contended I with the rulers. Urging an argument or debate or he fought him. What is your problem, people? 
I go away for a little time and look at the mess you got going on here. Jesus Christ has gone away for a little time and look at the mess that you guys got going on here and you wait till when Jesus Christ comes back, catches us doing what we're doing in the church today and he's going to contend with us. And you will have to give an account for your Tobias and not giving to the preacher, not given to people who are serving the Lord, missionaries and evangelists. You have to give an account. I sure would not want Jesus Christ to sit there and urge an argument with me before all the Christians have ever been saved. Why is the house of God forsaken? And boy, is that that verse is overquoted and misquoted. And we are not the house of God when you go into brick, stone, or wood, or whatever you build your church on. That is not. It is here for the temple, but it is not here for the church age today. For we are the body. Why are Christians, why is the preacher, why are those that love the Lord forsaken? That's the question. Why is it forsaken? Because of Tobiah. Tobiah is keeping people out. He was keeping the Levites from not getting what they needed to get. Sound like he was on a typical uh, deacon board, maybe. There are people that will not go to church today because the Tobias are in the church. And when you deal with them as such as I deal with them, they'll say, well, there's hypocrites in the church. Well, guess what? They're right. Yeah, I've got to bow my head in shame and say, yeah, I know. This is in a shame, but I can't say that. Keep reading. And I gathered them together and set them in their place. Now that does not mean, you know, he, he, he put the priests back and the Levites back and the singers back where they were supposed to. That's what that means. This is, this is not, you know, we run a church, you right in your place. No, that's, this is good. He's put them back to what their job they're supposed to be doing. You want a revival in America? You need to put the people back to do what they're supposed to be doing. That is prayer. That is going to all, all the world and preach the gospel and living right and abstain from all appearance of evil. You can't do that when the church is doing evil. In the name of Christ, of course. Hallelujah. Praise God and pass the plate. One more round of jungle music, please. Then brought all the Judah the tithe of the corn and the new wine and oil unto the treasuries. Oh, the people are bringing back again. You know, there's some people that will not give to the church because they know there's sin in there. You know, I sat in a church one time. I put my offering in there. And I said, Lord, you know what? Let that money not go to anything that's, that's sinful and lustful. Imagine me at the sin of church and pray a prayer like that to put my money in. Because I knew what was going. I knew where some of the money was going. Don't tell me God's put me in places and showed me things for the ministry that He's given me. That one day, listen, I've lived this stuff. And I got more to live. I'm not perfect. And I made treasures over the treasures. Wait a minute. Verse thirteen again. And I made treasures. Over the treasuries. Notice the S in treasurers. Not just one. Listen, when you're in a church, you're dealing with money, you better have two or three people. I say three, at least. You say, why is that? What if one of the men's got to use the bathroom? Never leave one man with the money. What if one man, you got two men there, and one comes in and says, Listen, hi, Fred, your house is burning. You got to go. Well, you're leaving one man with the money. You better have three people with the money. Just in case something comes up where there's two, two people trying to warn you, trying to help you out here. Never leave one person alone with money. Never go out and witness with one person. Look at Joseph and, uh, and Fonifer's wife. 
That would be a big illustration. And I met with the treasures over the treasuries. Shemaiah the priest. Zadok the scribe. And of the Levites. Pediah. And next to them was Hannah the son of Zephyr. The son of Matanah. Matana, for they were counted faithful. Go read Acts 6 about the deacons. Read 1 Timothy, I think it's chapter 3 about the deacons. And then read about the deacons' wives. And they were counted faithful. And their office was to distribute unto their brethren, the Jews, I mean, not the, excuse me, the Levites and the priests. You saw how the first guy, he was the priest, and then the scribe. You got to take care of those who love the Lord and working for the Lord. A lot of people, they have a great preacher. He, he's a King James man. He's a solid, rock-solid man. He's built upon the foundation of Jesus Christ. And you know what? He's going to get more of a blessing than his church people. The church people sought the treasures of the earth rather than the, the heavenly. And he sought the heavenly and struggled. Imagine... Jesus Christ and judgment seat of Christ taking a man who loves the Lord, a preacher. Imagine turning that man around with the crowns on his head, turns around and face the people in the congregation and looking over his shoulder and say, Why didn't you take care of this man? Gabriel, tell me how much Bill spent on dog food. Michael, tell me how much Jim spent on worms and fishing equipment and all the gasoline for his boat. And I got a man here that's well done, now a good faithful servant, and his church people need to take care of him. I'm not talking about the preachers out there who ain't worth shooting. Giving up on the Lord to, you know, to get, to get anybody to come in the church and do anything to get people. I'm talking about the man that, that fought and did right and did righteousness and loved the Lord Jesus Christ and spent his time on his knees and in the word and did what he could with the Lord's blessing and still did not get the help from the church he was supposed to. Remember me, oh my God. Not OMG. Oh my God. You know what he's saying? Oh my God. I can't believe the mess that these idiots got themselves into. Lord, I go away and. Oh my God. Concerning this. Concerning this. Tobiah and the priest. Not, you think I'm full of it? That's what the scriptures say. Oh my God, Lord. What did they do? Of your grace and mercy, there was a Jerusalem to come back to. And wipe not out my good deeds that I have done for the house of my God. Don't you ever dare say that as a Christian. As a born again Christian, don't you ever say your good deeds. But it's not works of it's not works of uh, it's not your works. It's all based upon Jesus Christ. At least any man boasts. You didn't do nothing. Under the law, Nehemiah could say, listen, Lord, I, I, you saw me throw all that stuff out. You, throw, you saw me throw them out. You, you saw me get the priests and the Levites, put them back in office, put the singers where they belong, and I put the men in charge to do it. You saw that, Lord. So that's where people can't understand the difference. Of, why is there a big difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament? That's the difference. There is. One's an Old Testament, starts with an O-L-D. The other one's a New Testament, starts with an N-E-W. One is based upon faith and works. The other one's based upon faith and grace. For the offices thereof. Now, you just saw it when I said church office. You think I was just blowing my head up. 
didn't you? You didn't think I was knew who I was talking about when I said church offices. I knew what I was saying. By the way, don't you think when when Tobias sets his office in the in the throne and where God belongs, who do you think is going to come in and clean up and put the Levites in order and put the priests in order and put the singers in order? Jesus Christ. And he's going to turn to his father and he's like, wow. What did you guys get yourself into? From day one, Abram, don't go to Egypt. Well, she's my, she's my sister. You know when the Bible says God is long-suffering for us? He is long-suffering. There's a lot more than patience. In those days, here we go. So I in Judah, some treading wine presses on the Sabbath. Violation of the commandments. You are not to work on the Sabbath. This is one of the things they started doing to go foul. It's one of, it's one of the Ten Commandments, I believe, number three. They are violating the commandment of honor the Sabbath day. They're out there working. Can you imagine Nehemiah? Okay, I got Tobiah taken care of. The priests are taken care of. Oh, they are, what are you guys doing? It's the Sabbath day. What are you guys doing? Oh, man. And bringing in sheaves and laden asses, as also wine, grapes, and figs, and all manner of burdens, which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. And I testify against them in that day, wherein they sold victuals. You know what Nehemiah does as a preacher? That's your sin! He doesn't preach a little Jesus that's a teacher. He doesn't preach a little nice little story. He preaches sin. And names it as it is. We need more Nehemiahs. There dwelt men of Tyre. That's up north west. Also therein, which brought fish. And all manner of wear. I talked about that's Tupperware, software, hardware kind of stuff. It sold on the Sabbath. And the children of Judah and in Jerusalem. You weren't supposed to do that. Not on the Sabbath. They're violating God's commandments already. Then I contended. We've already saw that word. Urge an argument to debate. With the nobles of Judah, and said unto them, What evil thing is this that ye do and profane the Sabbath day? Names their sin, points them out. The nobles. When are you going to get a pastor who's got a, a church full of doctors and lawyers and all the kinds of people? When are you going to see him contend with the people? <laughs> right. Sure. Don't hold your breath. Did not your fathers this? Thus, excuse me. And did not our God bring all this evil upon us going to Babylon? The cities being destroyed, the temple being destroyed. Upon this city, yet ye bring more wrath upon Israel by profaning the Sabbath. Why? Because you guys ought to know better. You went to Babylon because of what your fathers did. And now you're doing it. They're without excuse, is what Nehemiah is telling them. And it came to pass that when the gates of Jerusalem began to be dark before the Sabbath, I commanded the gates should be shut. Notice how he had to command it. Why didn't you say, all right, guys, shut the gates? Why do you have to command them? Because there were some people who probably would not want to shut the gates. 
I mean, after all, Sunday they have a 10% sale and buy three, get one for it free. The favorite, our favorite racers works on Sunday. Your favorite racers works on Sunday and is not in church because you're at the restaurant on Thursday, on Sunday. Everything about that, you doing business on a Sunday prevents other people from going to church. I command the gate should be shut and charge them they should not be open till after the Sabbath. And some of my serv servants set I at the gate. He had to set people there like to make sure this his orders were given. You know why? Because if you're not going to obey God, you're not going to obey Nehemiah. If you're not going to obey Nehemiah, you ain't going to obey God. You know why God put a father in charge of a family? Because if those children are not going to obey their father, they're not going to obey God the Father. That father is the only way those children are going to see God. And don't tell me a child that, that disrespects his parents is going to, going to respect God. No. You are violating the laws of nature. He's telling these Jews, he's making sure these Jews make it solid and do it. And that's what a father's job. You make sure your children do, and you make sure you, they, they do it. You tell a child to do something, you go and check and make sure it was done. Nehemiah chapter 13, verse whatever verse we're at. That means, Dad, you get off your lazy butt, put the drink down, turn off the TV set, make sure your family's doing what they're supposed to be doing. Scripture, Nehemiah chapter 13, whatever verse we're at. That's why children are out today. Fathers are not doing their jobs. They got other things, other play things, other play toys instead of their children, instead of their wife. They're not teaching their wives like the scriptures say. The wife has a question, she's supposed to ask her husband. So my servant said I at the gates that they should not, there should no burden be brought in on the Sabbath day. So the merchants and sellers of all kind of ware lodge without Jerusalem once or twice. All right, one day is fine, second day. Then I testified against him and said unto him, Why lodge ye about the wall? If you do it so again, I will lay my hands on you. From that time forth came they no more on the Sabbath. <laughs> you don't think the Nehemiah went to, Hi guys, you don't want to come back, please? If you come back again, I'll tell you right now, I'll put my hands on you, I'll choke you to death. Nehemiah was a man. Today they sue him. Give him a jury trial and jury say he's innocent and then stew cry baby. And I commanded the Levites that they should cleanse themselves and that they should come again come and, come and keep the gates to sanctify the Sabbath day. Remember me oh my God. Oh God what a mess. Concerning this also, and spare me according to the greatness of thy mercy. Oh, Lord, these people. Oh, Lord. Next. <laughs> Next. By the way, you do know in the, in the millennium the law is back and the Sabbath is back. Almost like there's going to be someone, people who are going to want to do work on the Sabbath. And Jesus had to call, John, you want to go take care of that? Peter, yeah, we'll take care of that. You want to get one of those born again Christians? I mean, they're, they're messing around over there. This is a Sabbath day. What do you think the lake of fire is for? This is this is future. And in those days also saw I Jews that had married wives of Ashdod, Philistine. 
Who were the one kept on giving David the trouble? Who kept giving Saul trouble? Who kept giving Samson trouble? And what do they do? They marry into the family. Who gives the Christian the hardest time? The world. And what do the Christians do? They marry into the world. Of Ammon and Moab. We just read they weren't supposed to be part of the congregation. So let's marry them. That's what America says. You want to be a citizen? Just marry somebody and then you can be a U.S. citizen. The people that don't belong in America. Oh, I'm sorry. And their children spanked half in the speech of Ashdod, Philistine, and could not speak in the Jews' language. Now let me ask you a question. Spanked half in the speech of Ashdod, Philistine, and could not speak in the Jews' language. Well, what would be the other half of the language? Where were they? They were in Babylon. They learned the Philistine language. They learned the Babylonian language, but they didn't know nothing about Hebrew. So you get these great professors that come out of the pulpit, and the Hebrew says, and I say, shut up. You know what happens when you intermarry to someone you're not supposed to marry? The people, the children that you have will not know God's language. Especially if the other partner, the other spouse speaks a foreign language. GD, G, G, JC, and other cuss words. And guess what your children are going to grow up and imitate when the great holiness of the other parent? No. That's what the Bible saying. Nehemiah chapter 13. Why do I have problems? Read the Bible. And I contended. <laughs> Number three, contended. When are you going to get a guy who's going to get in the pulpit and contend with your relationship with the world? Oh, uh, yeah, my preacher does that. Wait till you see what Nehemiah does. Nehemiah does not talk. I contended with them and cursed them. Oh. Whoa. And smoke certain of them. Man, he's punching. He's slapping. He's angry. And plucked off their hair. <laughs> he's pulling hair, man. It's a cat fight. <laughs> oh, preacher can't do that. Why? It's in Nehemiah chapter 13. And God does not rebuke him one bit. Matter of fact, he has a name in the book. And made them swear by God, saying, You shall not give your daughters unto their sons, nor take their daughters unto your sons, or for yourselves. Did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these? Yet among many nations was there no king like him who was beloved of his God, and God made him king over all Israel. Nevertheless, even him did outlanders, out of the land, non-Jewish women, cause him to sin. You know what Nehemiah knows too? He knows his history. Messing with the wrong people, marrying the wrong people, is going to mess your life. Shall we then hearken unto you to do all this great evil? Great evil. Great evil. Whining and dining with the world is a great evil. To transgress, it's a transgression against our God. It's against our God. Black and white. In marrying strange wives. And one of the sons of Jedoiah, Jediah, the son of Eshobeth, there's that name, the high priest, was son in law to Sanballat. That's another enemy. 
Sanballat and Tobiah were enemies. One guy set a lead with him or even married into Tobiah. Now here's someone who's actually a son-in-law to uh, Sanballat, the Haranite. Therefore I chased him from me. Now can you just picture, the, here we are, we're in the church service, and the pastor's chasing the guy out of the church. Pulling his hair. Hitting him. Talk about the church. Amen. Remember them, oh my God. Because they had defiled the priesthood. Aren't we priests? Re Revelation chapter 1. What do you think God calls it? He calls it defiled. And the covenant of the priesthood. And of the Levites. Thus cleansed I them from all strangers. And appointed them wards of the priests and Levites. Every one his business. And for the wood offering. And times appointed. And for the first fruits. Remember me. Oh my God. For good. And that is the close of the book. As we finish another book. We finish this book as Nehemiah is cleaning house. He's getting right. He's getting the people right. Getting right sin. The way he should be doing. And I've got to close because we're out of time.